Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Yakuma Crystal, and today I'm going to be talking about surprising ways computers can rehumanize your patient care experience. I'm a pediatric endocrinologist, which means I take care of kids with diabetes. Diabetes can be a really challenging disease for a family to manage. These kids have to take insulin injections a minimum of four times a day just to stay healthy, just to stay alive. I had this one little girl in my clinic, we'll call her Sally. Sally was a sweet little six-year-old who had diabetes, and we've been having a really hard time controlling her diabetes. She had a lot of high blood sugars, a lot of low blood sugars, and not much in between. But what was most concerning is that Sally was losing weight. And that's a problem when you're a six-year-old girl and your main job is to grow. So Sally and her family came to see me in my diabetes clinic so we could try to figure out what was going on. I had Sally on the exam table, and I was doing her exam, listening to her heart, her lungs, feeling her belly, trying to get a better picture of everything. Then Sally's mom looked at me with a very concerned expression and said, so how much weight has she lost this time? I remember looking at Sally's growth chart earlier in the day and seeing that her weight trend had gone down, but I couldn't remember off the top of my head exactly how much Sally had lost weight. So I told Sally's mom, give me a second, let me check. At that point, I had to disengage. I had to stop what I was doing on Sally, put my stethoscope back on, walk away from Sally and her mom, walk towards my computer, turn it on, wait for it to load, log in, wait for it to launch, find the EHR, find the schedule, find Sally on the schedule, find her appointment, find her growth chart, find the weight section, look at the points, all to figure out and tell mom, it looks like Sally's lost about two more pounds over the past four months. This whole exploration, gathering the information for Sally's mom, was taking so long and it was so frustrating to me. I told them, I'm so sorry. Sometimes it takes a long time for me to get the information that I need out of the computer. And then Sally's mom said something interesting. She said, oh, that's fine. That's just the way things are with doctors these days. And that gave me pause. It made me sad and frustrated. Sad because it was clear to me that Sally's mom, a lot of my patients, and probably you, are resigned to the fact that your clinic visit is now going to be shared with a computer. Frustrated because I knew it had to be better. Your clinic time is special time that you took out of your day to talk to your doctor because you were concerned about something. Your problems, your medications, your allergies, some new condition you Googled that you're pretty sure you have. <laughs> you took time out of your day, drove through that convoluted parking lot, found parking finally, sat in the waiting room, got coughed on by somebody, checked in, waited, 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 finally got your 30 minutes with your doctor, just to have them stare at the computer the entire time. That must be really frustrating. You must feel really shortchanged because of the computer. But the computer is where your story lives. All the information about your history, all the impressions and notes that people have made about what they think is going on with you and what we should do next, that all lives in that box. And the only way your doctor the only way I can get that information out so I can make the next plan is by talking to the computer. And this is how I have to talk to the computer, tip-tapping away. It demands my sense of touch, my sense of time, my sense of sight. All that attention, all that eyesight, I'm not giving you. That must be really frustrating. It is for me. But why does it have to be that way? Why is this the only way we can talk to our computers? What if we could flip the paradigm a little bit? Instead of forcing us to learn the language of computers, what if we could teach computers to learn the language of people? Well, what does that mean? Speech, voice, talking. Did you know that humans are the only species that use our words to communicate our thoughts? It's true. Bees dance and whales sing, but only humans talk. When you were two months old, you were cooing and babbling to get your mother's attention. When you were one, 
you had about two-word vocabulary when you grew up to be five years old, that exploded to 2,000. Speech, talking, that's such an inherent part of who we are as people, the way we ask for information and get information back, it's almost surprising we haven't done more to use it as a method to get information about our health. So that's what got me thinking, and that's what got me excited. And that's where VIVA comes in. VIVA stands for the Vanderbilt EHR Voice Assistant. I get to work on a team that designs a program very much like Siri or Alexa, where you can use your voice to ask about your health and get information back. Think about that. You don't have to be tied to your computer, married to the keyboard. Your doctor doesn't have to ignore you the whole time. They could just ask for the information they need and get the information back. Let's do a little thought experiment. How many of you guys know what your last cholesterol value was? And I hope you've gotten it checked recently. It's a pretty important number, right? It corresponds to your heart outcomes. Well, if you don't know it, how would you find out? You could call your doctor's office, wait on hold, finally get a person, then they could fax you a piece of paper that has your cholesterol on there. Maybe you can make it out. Or if you're lucky enough to belong to a health institution that has a mobile application, you could find the app, log on, go to the lab section, find the cholesterol, and that's great. That's a step in the right direction. But what if you could just say, what's my cholesterol? and have that value said back to you? What if you get an explanation of what that meant, whether it was good or bad, and what you needed to do to make it better? What if you could say, hey, Viva, when's my next appointment with my doctor again? Or, hey, Viva, can you just refill all my medications and have them mailed to my house this time? Or, hey, Viva, can you let my doctor know I have a new pain in my back I want to talk to them about? And what if you got a call back in minutes because your message was received? And what if it only responded to your voice because you had a special voice print? This is all possible, guys. Think about it. If Domino's Pizza can let us order a pepperoni pizza and have it delivered to our house in two minutes with an Alexa voice command, certainly a few smart people in the health domain can figure out how to let you use your voices to ask about your health. We just really need to ask in order to make it possible. We need to shift this paradigm to make it possible. So I'm hoping the next time I see my Sally patient in clinic and I'm by her side and doing her exam and I have questions about her health and I want to know what happened to her weight, I don't have to step away from her. I could just ask Viva, what is going on? Tell me about Sally's weight. Sally's latest weight was 18.6 kilograms measured today compared to her previous measurement of 17.2 kilograms from about two months prior, that's an increase of about 1.4 kilograms. Thank you, Viva. Viva's able to do that right now, today. And what's interesting about this interaction is it's out loud. I can stand right there by my patient's side and find out this information the same time that Sally's mom's finding out this information. We share the knowledge together and I can explain to her what it means. We can look at the graph together and make plans moving forward. And think about yourself. Next time you're with your doctor and you're wrapping up your clinic appointment, instead of them turning away from you to go back to their computer to do all the things they need to, to make sure everything's okay, what if they could just say, hey, Viva, is there anything else? It looks like Mr. Jones has no more refills remaining on his atenolol. This medication has been marked as a long-term medication, so he may need additional refills today. So what's interesting about that interaction is that that might actually save you time. First of all, this is an opportunity to say, well, do I want more refills of this medication? Is it working for me? This is an opportunity to elevate something to your doctor's attention because you let it happen. And also, you don't have to worry about standing in line at the pharmacy just to find out that you have no more refills, then calling your doctor's office to try to get refills, waiting on hold, listening to how important your call is to them. And I say that not as a provider, but as a patient on the other end, 
waiting and waiting on hold for my refills. Again, this is all possible. We just need to enable it. Your time is valuable. Your time is important. You get, what, maybe 30 minutes with your doctor every six months? You shouldn't have to share it with a computer. You shouldn't have to split your time with this thing. But what if? What if we didn't let our computers be these intrusive third parties in our clinic visit? What if we let them participate? What if we let them help us and actually help us let you stay with your doctor? Help your doctor keep eye contact and keep engaging with you and keep talking to you and occasionally just ask for the things they needed? What if you could just ask for the things you wanted? So that's what I task you with today. Don't be complacent. It's not okay the way things are right now. You shouldn't have to share your time with a computer. You should demand your doctor's full attention, and your doctor should give you their full attention. And people should be working on ways and thinking through ways to let computers, instead of taking away from your experience, rehumanize your patient experience again. So I task you to ask for more. And when you ask, you should expect a response back, no matter who or what you're asking. Thank you.